Look at your neighbor and ask him, do you have a mind to change? Tell them they got till midnight to get that fixed. They got till midnight to dump out all jealousy, all pettiness, all unforgiveness, all confusion, all blaming other people for your mistake. You got till midnight to get rid of every poison that's hindering you. Woe be unto you if you go into another year with the old mentality while somebody's in the hospital begging God for the opportunity that you have right now. You better step into this moment. Lay your hands on your head and say, give me a new mind. Give me a new mind means give me a new perspective. Give me a new way of looking at my circumstances. Get my mind ready for this year because when I get this year, there's going to be blessings. There's going to be opportunities. Oh yes, it's going to be some struggles. It's going to be some tests. But even the struggles are an opportunity for me to show off the victory if my mind can handle the change. Do you have the mindset to be blessed? You have to decide to be blessed. I will rejoice. I, as an act of my will, I've decided I'm going to rejoice. I made up my mind. I'm going to enjoy. I'm as healthy as I'm going to be. I can't get any younger. I will rejoice. See, that's getting on somebody's nerves right now. No, not me. I can't rejoice. I'm still angry. I'm not going to rejoice until he leaves that other woman. You are wasting time. You have to let the past go and step over over into the future and say I, I will rejoice everything that's inflexible and everything that's not ready and everything that's negative and everything that's holding me back I refuse to take it over into another year and waste another new year with an old mind a complete transformation The most powerful tool that you have right now is your mind. And your mind is so strong and so powerful that the Bible said it is with the mind that we serve the Lord. That's why the enemy fights you in your mind. The devil doesn't have to tie you up for you to be bound. He just has to tie up your head with stress, with worry, with low self-esteem, with pettiness, with anger. And he can make you physically sick because your mind is sick. But somebody in here tonight is about to get a miracle in your head. See, the devil has one mission. is to rob you of your destiny. When you have thoughts that are negative, that's not God. That's Satan. You got to understand that this hard time that you're going through prepares you for the life God has for you. Everything you ever thought you would not make it through, you got past it. Now, if you're currently going through something right now, guess what? You're going to get past that too. It's easy to go around worried about our future, stressed over our finances. We're tempted to live guilty because of past mistakes, bitter over what didn't work out. We wonder why we don't enjoy life, why we can't sleep at night. It's because our mind is cluttered. If you're going to reach your destiny, you have to clear out the clutter. You can't stop negative things from coming, but you can keep them from staying. When we make mistakes, guilt will come. You can hold on to it, go around down on yourself, or you can let it go. The past is over. This is a new day. I'm moving forward. Something doesn't work out. You can hold on to it. Or you can let it go and say, God, I know you have something better. I know you're directing my steps. You can clear out the clutter. You can get rid of the negative things that are stealing your peace, draining your energy. The scripture tells us to guard our minds because all through the day there's clutter. There's noise, there's jealousy, there's offense. They may come, but you don't have to hold on to it. God has you hearing this because he wants to do an intervention. He wants to help you clear out the worry, the guilt, the bitterness, those things that are cluttering your life. Sometimes living worried has become normal to us. We've done it for years. 
We've gone around thinking we don't deserve to be blessed. We've made too many mistakes. We've let that recording play so long that we've accepted it. Thoughts have always told you, you're not that talented. You don't have a good personality. We didn't know any better. We believe those lies and now our mind is cluttered. This is your day for an intervention. It is time to clear out the clutter. You need to say, no, thank you. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm wearing a crown of favor. Clear out the negative. You have enough people in life against you. Don't be against yourself. My challenge, don't say another negative word about yourself. Fear can't stay where faith is. Discouragement can't stay where hope is. Mediocrity can't stay where greatness is. Program your mind with what God says about you. If you don't clear out the clutter, it will keep you from going to new levels. Worry will keep you from rising higher. Going around offended, bitter, will keep you from new opportunities. Why do all these people hurt me? That's why I'm upset. That happened 27 years ago. Why are you still holding on to it? Still upset over how you were raised. Still bitter over that company that let you go. Don't let that poison your future. They hurt you once. Don't let them continue to hurt you by holding on to it. Now, I'm not saying what they did wasn't hurtful. But as long as you hold on to it, you're giving them your power. We only have so much emotional energy each day. Do you know how much energy it takes to hold a grudge, to go around trying to pay people back? That is valuable energy you need for your dreams. You have to clear out the clutter. That's what makes room for God to give you the beauty. When my dad went to be with the Lord and I stepped up to pastor the church, I was very insecure. One Sunday, right after I first started speaking, I overheard these two older ladies talking. One said, he's not as good as his father. The other answered, yeah, I don't think he's going to make it. I was tempted to shrink back, but I felt something rise up in me so strongly. I thought, who are they to tell me what I can't do? They don't determine my destiny. They didn't know me before I was formed in my mother's womb. I don't need their approval. I did what I'm asking you to do. I cleared out the clutter. Clear out the worry. Clear out the negativity. Live from a place of faith, a place of peace. God has you in the palm of his hand. He said to the Israelites, stand still and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. You may have plenty of good reasons to live upset, not able to sleep at night. But when you're in peace, that's a position of power. When you're in peace, you're showing God that you trust Him. See, the enemy's main target is our mind. That's the control center for our life. If he can keep it cluttered, filled with doubt, as long as our mind is cluttered, it keeps God from turning it around. God works where there's faith. And the way to stay in faith is don't talk about how big the problem is. Talk about how big your God is. The good news is, right now, He's breathing in your direction. He's lining up the breaks that you need. Don't let fear clutter your mind. Don't let doubt keep you from your miracle. Don't let people talk you out of your dreams. Sometimes we're frustrated because we're trying to do what only God can do. You can't let yourself get well, make a door open. Our part is to believe. And then let God do His part. Trust Him to work it out. I'm not saying to always sit back and be passive, but there are some battles you're not supposed to fight. Let God fight them for you. But while you're waiting for things to change, it's easy to live worried, thinking about how it's never going to work out. Oh, clear out that clutter. God, thank you that you're in control. Thank you that you are for me. If we do our part, God will do his part. He'll not only keep you in peace, but he'll get you to where you're supposed to be. You can clear out the clutter. You can get rid of the negative things that are stealing your peace, taking your joy, draining your energy. The scripture tells us to guard our minds. 
You have to be proactive when it comes to keeping your mind in peace. Because all through the day, there's clutter. There's noise, there's jealousy, there's hurts, there's offense. They may come, but you don't have to hold on to it. I am not my issue. <laughs> See, you've been going through what you've been going through so long. You think the issue is you. But you can stuff it with a thought. I mean right now. I mean right now. The darkness that has overwhelmed you. You can stop it with a thought. We've all had times where something didn't work out. We didn't get the promotion. The loan didn't go through. A relationship didn't make it. We did our best. We prayed. We believed. But the door didn't open. But God wouldn't have allowed the door to close if it was going to keep you from your destiny. We may not see how it could work out, but God hasn't run out of options. He's not at a loss at how to turn your situation around. I don't know you by those things that you identify yourself by. Leave that out. Stop introducing yourself to the next season of your life with the resume of your regrets from the last time. Leave it out. Leave it out. Leave it out. You know, when you go in your mind and you're like, I think God is calling me to do, but da, 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 leave that out. The majority of people live their lives based on other people's opinions, whether it's their parents, older sibling, or even worse, the anonymous per person in their YouTube comments. If you haven't got their approval by now, you're not going to get it. That's their problem. It's not your problem. Some of you are 50, 60 years old, still trying to get somebody's approval. Better news is this. You don't need it. You don't need their approval. Let it go. I don't need the approval of other people to be happy. Your approval or disapproval means nothing to me. Loyalty has an expiration date. You can never see yourself not being with that person. But at a certain point, all of the signs and wonders revealed itself that that relationship is over. Most people work hard, but they don't think hard. And Shok taught me that the mind is like a factory, a mental factory. And whatever you think about all day long pours ingredients into this mental factory. And that's what builds the economic, social, financial fabric of your life. He quoted me a Bible phrase that says, As you think, so you become. How awesome. There's this governor on our lives. And it is a governor. And it's a, it's your identity. It's this internal, it's what you think you're worth. It's what you think you deserve. And the problem for good people, see, we all know someone right now in our life where we have who's not ethical, who's not a good person, who's winning. And you're like, I can't believe they're getting it, right? Why can't I? I'm a good person. I treat people well. I'm honest. When I'm tired or worn out, or just basically sick of the grind. Well, what do I do all those days? I go anyways. I get it done. Even if I'm just going through the motions, I go through the motions. Why do some people make bold decisions and other people make Decisions that are based on trying to hang on to what they've got. When you can change your decisions, you can change your life. When you can change the force that controls your decisions, you can change anything in your life. At some level, we have certain beliefs and values. When we get in the wrong state, they make the wrong decisions. When you get in a strong, empowering state, you will make a better decision. Happiness is both a grasp of the obvious, as well as an awe of the mysterious. But for most people around us, happiness seems to be either something left behind or something yet to be discovered. Like all the good things in life, happiness is elusive by nature, but not impossible to capture. A major key for bringing joy into our lives lies in the next word, discipline. If there is a magic word that stands out above all the rest, this is the word, discipline. Why sit here until we die. See, the only thing that will move you out of your comfort zone, out of complacency, into the, 
the things that only God can do for you. This is what the Lord told me to tell you. He said, the only thing that will get you there is hunger. The only thing that lifted them out of their self-pity was hunger. It's all about the intent and what you're about to do. How do I stop feeling so insecure? You gotta work on it. What you need to build a skill in if you feel like you're a very insecure person that's seeking validation from other people's attention um, is you got to learn how to validate yourself. And there's a couple simple habits that I engage in. I call them the high five habits. Just think about a high five. When you give someone a high five, you validate them. When you give someone a high five, you cheer them on. Each fundamental being equally in need of study and attention. A good question to ask before undertaking any project or setting any new objective, then, is what are the most important half-dozen things that will make the major difference in how it works out? So whether the enterprise is art or architecture, music or sculpture, mathematics or sports, business or farming, success or lifestyle, it's the fundamentals that help. Misery loves company, but people go so far when you're miserable and you're a negative person, you go very far to create misery and negativity in other people's lives. So I've learned to laugh. Some of it doesn't feel good to receive it, but I've learned to laugh at it because you understand that people have a job to do. Haters, being a hater is a full-time job. Being a miserable person who has a job to create misery for other people's lives is a full-time job. I mean, who wants to be unemployed? There are some folks in it that will just hate you because God likes you. You don't have to do anything to them. You don't have to mess up anything. You don't have to start a fight. They don't even have to know you. Most of my haters have never met me. I couldn't have done nothing to you because I don't even know you. How you going to hate me if you don't even know me? Give me a chance to earn your hate. I just want to talk to you about haters for a second, because we all got them. Everybody got haters. I didn't even know I had these many haters until I go on the internet, there they are. They're just waiting on me. They don't even know me. They don't know you. They just be saying stuff. You don't even know where it comes from. That's why we have good and we have evil. And at the same time, what, what I have an appreciation is if you're online or if you run into somebody and they just so happens to be a hater and they end up saying something to you that will actually change your life and make you a better person. You may not like the way they're saying it, but if they're saying something that's the truth that could actually impact you and make a difference, then you're supposed to remain a student of life to learn, even if what you're learning is coming from a hater. Take the lesson from it, grow, mature, understand it, process and then make the adjustments and then you keep it moving understand that haters have a job process it understand it balances our world the possession of great financial resources that improves the quality of your life and gives you added dignity and expanded lifestyle so decide for yourself what wealth means to you latch on to your own mental image of wealth and let's see if the ideas I'm about to bring to you will make sense and perhaps provide you with the inspiration to put the plan into high action so that as the days pass, you will discover a growing sense of freedom and dignity. We want you to have that joy when you don't have anything in particular to be joyful about. And joy is not always extreme hilarity and laughing as hard as you can laugh. I love one of the definitions of uh, peace and joy, a calm delight. Yeah, you know, yesterday afternoon I took a little nap to rest a little, but I had this thought. I said, I just love my life. And that's such a wonderful feeling because for so many years, I didn't like life. During safe to secure times when you want to do something a little different, people say, wait, wait, what are you doing? We've already figured out how to be successful, we, which you haven't, but you think you have. But during times when you're in the deepest valley and it's the darkest, People will let you test. In fact, they're willing to test. They're just throwing mud on the wall saying, what's going to stick? What what will work? So th there's never been a better testing time than right now. I would ask you to think about what you're going to do in the first five minutes of your day. Do not begin your day by picking up your phone. 
Do not begin your day by reading the news. Do not begin your day by turning on the TV or the radio. None of those things are going to feed your soul. You need to feed your soul first. So I want to recommend that you start a new habit during this pandemic that I guarantee you will help recharge you every day. It's called God's Word, First Word. The next key word is happiness, the universal quest. Happiness is a joy that most often comes as a result of positive activity. Like wealth, it too has a wide variety of meanings and interpretations. Happiness is both the joy of discovery and the joy of knowing. It is a result of an awareness of the full range of life, the color, the sound, the harmony. And it is the joy that comes from designing a life and practicing the fine art of living well. So there's always stuff going on in life. There's always the storm. It's one thing to stand up here and preach it. It's another thing for you to sit and listen to it. But we got to go out and live it. Live it. And most of the time, whatever I preach, I'm tested on. And most of the time, whatever you hear. Anybody ever notice that? You'll be tested on. Well, I have a question for you today. When's the last time you did something for the last time? Yeah. When's the last time you did something for the last time? That would you said, that didn't work any better. That didn't work anymore. That doesn't satisfy me. Now, that's all about subtraction. Bill's question was an addition. What if, hey, was the last time you did something for the first time? In other words, what are you creating, building? But I'm asking, when's the, la what's the, la when's the last time you did something for the last time? What are you losing? What are you letting go? So what are you getting rid of so that you could be better tomorrow? The struggle has never been with someone else. The struggle has been within yourself. So this word is for anyone who you've had so much on you. And I'm talking about shame. I'm talking about regret. I'm talking about pressure. I'm talking about the things that make you anxious, questions, that you've forgotten what's in you and how God met you in your Bethels along the way. This season of your life is going to be a Bethel you will return to in future days. See, your track, all you got to do is look at your life. Y'all be tripping sometimes. Sometimes you trip yourself out. Look at this. How many of y'all just show me in if you've had really bad days before? Now, now let me ask you something. How many of y'all had some days and you didn't think you was going to make it? Now, you want to know something? Your track record for surviving bad, unbearable days, your track record is 100%. Wisdom does not prevent suffering. Wisdom does not prevent storms. However, the entire story is predicated on one simple fact. Are you wise or are you foolish? How do you know which one you are? It simply comes down to the foundation you choose to build on. That a wise person chooses to build on solid rock that withstands the storm, but a foolish person builds their house on sand, which always crumbles in the storm. Discipline is the bridge between thought and accomplishment, the bridge between inspiration and value achievement, the bridge between necessity and productivity. Remember, all good things are upstream. The passing of time takes us adrifting, and drifting only brings us the negative, the disastrous, the disappointment and the failure. Failure is not a cataclysmic event. It is not generally the result of one major incident, but rather a long list of accumulated little failings. For several years, I gave myself a way out. When you were free? I was, I was 300 pounds, and I was only until I was 24 years old. I would climb a mountain, I'd fall back down. i start climbing, I'd fall back down for the first 24 years of my life. I went to my first hell week, my second hell week, and then my third hell week came in SEAL training, and the CEO, Captain Bowen, looked at me. I'm on crutches, I'm all jacked up. He says, hey, this is your last time you're going to go through buds. Sit. The other thing that affects your decisions would be what I would call your story or your blueprint. We all have kind of a story about how our life is supposed to be. It comes from a set of life experiences, interpretations. Some people think life is all about getting theirs. Some people think life is about growing and contributing. Some people think life is about making judgments. Some people think life is about saving other people's lives. Some people think life is about being successful. Some people think God is the basis of everything. I came here to remind you that when people laugh at your visions and ideas, 
It's only because they don't have their own visions and ideas around what they're supposed to do with their life or their careers. People that don't have any dreams for themselves, they tend to be dream killers. People that don't have their own visions, they become vision killers. They want nothing more than to talk you out of your own visions. A lot of times when people interrupt you, they're managing their own anxiety, boredom, procrastination by coming to interrupt you. They're creating reasons to interrupt their own work or their own emotional state by coming and interrupting you. That's what I realized was happening. There's value in that detour. So adaptability is a huge word of maximizing your potential now so you can be sure to, you know, seize the future tomorrow. The third word I gave was a little phrase, and that's open-handedness. And I, I taught in that lesson last week about the fact we're either closed-handed or we're open-handed. The truth is some of you entered this crisis with nothing in your emotional tank and nothing in your spiritual tank. And you were already drained before this even happened. And you were the most vulnerable to distress. And I want you to know that I care about you. I care about you. And I mean that. And, and so does your church family. We want to help you through this difficult time. No one coming. I learned that a long time ago and it changed my life. See, most people are waiting, waiting for a break, waiting for a miracle, waiting for somebody to hand them an opportunity. But I am telling you, if you sit on the sidelines <clears throat> hoping someone will come to your rescue you wait your whole life <clears throat> the cavalry is not coming there is no magic or being thrown down from above if you don't save yourself you are going to stay stuck now that's <clears throat> a hard truth but it's a necessary one we lived in a whole we lived in a world where people expect life to be fair and but fairness was never part of the deal. <clears throat>